Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I have a uh, suggestion from one of my viewers as to what to do about an ARM platform as my daily driver for my desktop Linux. Let's take a look at that right after this. Riley, one of the one of the uh, people that listens to me uh, on the last couple of videos ago, I guess, said and he sent me a, a comment that says, "I've had an Apple M1 MacBook Air, and I have to say the speed is insane. It just goes to show how good ARM can be if given enough time and effort. Maybe you could take a look at those benchmarks as a comparison to desktop PCs and see if it suits you." If Linux can run on this thing, one day it'll be near perfect minus the repairability. Yeah, I mean, the repairability is, is something that, we're, that we need to deal with. But, yeah, but let's, yeah, I, I'm, I agree. I agree with you, Riley. I think that we should look at that, and I'm going to do that today. So let's do an install. I'll, I, I'll take you through what I did. Uh, from the point of taking the Apple. Now, what I did on mine, mine was a duplicate of a machine that I replaced it with, my Mac Mini. So it was the original one I was doing my video editing on up until its replacement this year. So um, I had to clear that machine off because I ran into an error that it didn't have enough space uh, left in the partition to be able to divide it up for Asahi Linux and apparently there's some minimums that it has to have. The first thing that I did when I started up, I have a, a, I have a Mac Mini that I took out of service and replaced it with one that I'm using to do uh, most, of my, most of my video work. So the easiest way to do this is I want to zero out this machine and get it back. I've already done it but I will show you what I did is to load up your system preferences and then go back to the menu. And right here, you'll see erase all content and settings. So if you choose that, it'll walk you through the steps to basically, it's the quickest and fastest way to reset your Mac back to its original Apple delivery uh, configuration. So all of your data, all of your applications, all your settings will be set back to the way Apple shipped the machine to you. So you don't have to go through a really lengthy process of reinstalling the Monterey or any of that. So yeah, I'll save you some time. It takes, uh, mm, let me see, on this machine, I would say it probably took, a, I mean, if, it, if it was more than six minutes, I would really be surprised. But then it was pretty quick. It was down here, it'll say download. You can check out the announcement. And then there'll be the original post uh, right here, which will give you the instructions to do this. Now, I did this a few days ago, and it failed. And I, and I suspect it's probably because, you know, it was the build that maybe was bad. So we're going to try it again today and see how far we get. It doesn't say, does it say I have to be root? Probably not. It might prompt me for that. We'll see. It's going to pipe this to shell. There we go. Okay. And the installer is in alpha state. Make, it may not work for everyone. It's intended for developers, early adopters. Make sure you're familiar with our documentation at this website right here. Let's see if we can actually get it going. This I will hide certain field. Useful for developers. No, I don't need to do that. So it's collecting information. It's telling me it's going to resize. And it looks like it is picking this one. Yeah, disk 3 S1. I don't, this is at disk 3 S1. So yeah, it's going to resize the APFS uh, partition for Mac OS. So yeah, we'll let it default. And how much do I want? 30% to Mac OS, 70% to the new Looks like the default is 50-50. That sounds good to me. And then the, the default is no, not to continue. We do. So we'll go ahead and start going. I'm releasing it. There's my stuff. And we'll click this.
all right, you'll be putting your system into a permissive security. Okay, well, that's I think is the idea. Ramping up. Okay, reboot. Now this should reboot automatically into Asahi Linux because it did say that was going to make it my default startup. Ew, ugly. There we go. Well, that looks like a grub bootloader to me. All right. We have calamaris coming up. And default US English, yep. Good. All done. Looks like we're in. And this should be plasma. All right. We have a native boot. It's taking 685 mega memory, it's 63 tasks, and 138 threads. Uh, we're on 5.17. This is still a release candidate, which the, it is officially released. So this is probably put up from their initial one. So uh, let's see. What else do we want to know? How much disk space is it taking? Um, yeah. Let's see what it comes configured with. Okay. 3.08. I'm not going to look at the score yet. Reboot is most likely needed. IP tables was loaded, but no rules. Yeah, that's, this is all common stuff. Yeah, all that same, same. Yeah, banner, sysstat, audit D. Automation tools, restricting file permissions. 63 is what it comes up to that's today that's pretty typical with this so yeah uh, as i had mentioned before to me that's i mean that is not hardened obviously <laughs> it doesn't harden well enough so i think that after you know looking at this and kind of kicking the tires on it a little bit you kind of see a little bit about how it works um, there's enough here to get started to really start to understand. One of the things with Asahi Linux is that the updates that you don't have to keep reinstalling Asahi Linux to get the new stuff. They will come down as part of the normal update process. So your Pac-Man SYE command will give you the updates that the team is working on. So. You don't have to go all the way back. In fact, you know, that's, I when I started this, you noticed it was at 517, and now it's at 519. So, yeah, I'm already picking up device driver support that has been added since the original uh, release of the alpha back in March. So, again, um, the, the two big things for me is Thunderbolt, but that's a lesser problem than the bigger one, which is the GPU. Uh, uh, rendering or acceleration that's really what I will need it looks good so far I think this is exciting and yeah I think this could be the answer to my problem at least uh, of having Linux on the desktop so I want to leave you today with a quote by Steve jo uh, Steve Wozniak not Steve Jobs Steve what the other Steve Steve Wozniak he said I just believe that the way that young people's minds develop is fascinating if you're doing something for a grade or a salary or a reward, it doesn't have as much uh, meaning as creating something for yourself and your own life. Anyway, um, I'm going to leave it there tonight. And uh, before we go, we'll take a look at the benchmarks. I'll walk you through those. So let me preface this benchmark a little bit. So I am going to benchmark this against 
Asahi Linux. I have a Kadas BIM3 Deb M1, that's the Odroid M1. Odroid M1 is Ubuntu 2004. Pep is running Peppermint 11, and this is running on my NUC. So, yeah, this is quite a mixed bag. So, let's, I can already see the green over here, which is interesting. This is a mobile processor versus the Mac Mini. So, all right, let's see what we get. And if you hear a fan noise, it's coming from the Kadas, which is currently running on my desktop. So here we go. Wow, Pep had a problem with Dbench. Compile Bench, none of them compiled, except for Debian. So we will ignore that one. <clears throat> Asahi Linux postmark is quite a bit faster than PEP. Now I'm almost wondering if I should benchmark this against Clear Linux and see if it's faster than Clear Linux. Yeah, RAM speed. Oh my goodness. Yeah, um, the architecture on x86 ain't so good. From an out now, the benchmarks I am running are testing the operating system. So this is not a test of how applications execute. This is a test of how well operating systems execute, which is the way I intended to write this so that I could compare one distro against another. And as fair a means as I possibly could think of. Wow. I'm, I just, I'm amazed. I did not expect this. I don't know what I was expecting. I, I mean, I don't ever try to bias how I think things should go. But, yeah, yeah there's the numbers. In cache, in the RAM speed, clearly Asahi is faster. Then streaming... Asahi is clearly faster by a pretty large margin. Uh, same with the scale and the triad. Wow, unbelievable. Now this is not, this is a, it's a, it's a Intel Core i7 11th gen mobile chip. So yeah, it is that is what's in the Intel NUC. Wow. Cash benchmark. It's it's almost three times faster than of course any of the low ones. But Peppermint is faster in the read modify write. So it did pick up some speed there. Open SSL. So they do have some of the accelerators working. Um because, yeah, the Apple chip has a cryptographic accelerator. And it clearly is working. And then the Apache server, yeah, the rest of them didn't really post anything, so. PEP did good in PHP. And then the D-Bench was 1.0. John the Ripper, we don't know the, because Asahi did not compile this successfully. And then the flexible I.O., I'm going to bypass that. Hold on. Yeah, there's, there's not enough data here to compare, so as you can see. All right, so Asahi Linux, obviously, in the, the mean of all tests, it's faster. Geometric means of CPU massive, it's faster. So processor intensive tasks are going to do better on the Mac Mini. Memory test is going to do better on the Mac Mini. Geometric meaning of the server tests, 8. 
versus five for the PEP. And Peppermint did better in the single threaded test, which Intel always does. Uh, first place finishes <laughs> 21. Um, and last place goes to the Odroid M1. Yeah, so that's pretty much what we saw before. Um, am, am I overly concerned about this? No. Uh, I I knew that I know I know that the M1 is quick. I know it's very fast, uh, and it. I mean, the the thing is, this is an operating systems test, not not a application test. So I just want to make sure you understand that. Okay, let's go look at some final thoughts and we'll move on from there. So before I go, uh, Riley, thank you very much for your comment. Thank you for the suggestion to try a Mac mini. I just happened to have pulled one out of service recently. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Hope to see you again in the next one and bye for now.